Saidi, how can we know our lights is enough to affect others' life? <laughs> how to know that your light is enough to affect others' lights? Others I think lights. we have to start on a much more humbler approach is that did I affect my own self with my light? So this, this was a… Is a, is a course in <coughs> how the huruf shows our path. For those that may be more familiar with Arabic, they understand tonight than insan and the kalima insan, it describes tariqah. So when somebody says, where's tariqah in Qur'an? It, it's, we've, we've given that example before, istiqamu fi tariqah. And in just the kalima of insan, the, the, the huruf and the letters describe a spiritual path. <clears throat> but the hardest part is the first noon, is that, that first do you, do you think you've made a connection with the ulul am and that you've dissolved all the lower characteristics, the bad characteristics and that you're truly reflecting their alif because they're alif, right? So they're like a sun because any alif is carrying that power and that light. So as a meditation and all of the trainings is to cast that light onto people so that they diminish the satanic influence and become more from Rahman. So first the person has to go through that struggle and understand how much they're struggling, how much they come against their, their bad character. Once they feel confident in, in that entire struggle it would be apparent to them how much light they have. They would know how much light they have and, and by virtue of how much they've suffered and struggled and strug continue to struggle. So it's, it's not all of a sudden, oh because I came to tariqah now I'm all the way at the top at the sunshine. So it's, it's a strong path, a heavy path. Being in front of that alif a lot of people burn and go haywire. So. It's not something easy because that alif will bring out all sorts of bad characters. And we said before like when you put something in a pot it looks nice to you but as soon as you boil it what happens? All these bizarre things may come out of the, that when you boil. Same in science, the guys loaded a video today, in science anytime you want to… As Salaamu Alaykum Wa Rahmatullahi Wa Barakatuh this is Shaykh Nur John, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Catalysts and a reaction to occur in the science, you start the fire, you put it, you heat it. The process of heating agitates everything and in the agitation you can begin to see what's going on. So somebody who's not agitated they look like they have good character because their electrons are not been agitated. Literally when you heat them by the testing and the tariqah, the presence of the shaykhs, their madad, everything they're doing they're becoming very heated. So once happens when you heat something all of the impurities begin to show themselves. So it's not for somebody to be complacent and happy with their bad character, oh that's just the way I am. No, you're supposed to see the impurity and take it out and see the impurity and take it out until you heat pure gold and it goes back to gold. But when you first heat it you're going to see all these other elements and dirtiness, you have to take those out.
And that's the, that's the process of imtihan and practice and all the, the heat of the tariqa energies and the presences of the shaykhs and the madads and all the, the, the jinn that people worship and are inside of them and they start to come out and in their homes and that's the whole process of getting rid of all of the garbage that people have collected over the years like antiquities, you know, they, they don't know what they have but they have this whole collection of statues and bad character within themselves and in their wujud and in their being and surrounding. So all that has to be cleansed and when they've been cleansed they know what their path was like. Then they go into knowledges and they understand the ilm of yaqeen and they're very strong in ayn al yaqeen as a result they have many experiences from haqq yaqeen. So the person has to reach to those inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuhu Ya Sayyidi Wa Alaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuhu uh, Sayyidi, question regarding the sohbah, how to detect light in others? How do we know if a person has the right light? Re detect light in others? Why, why do you have to detect the light in others? Just detect your own light. So you have to build yourself, focus on yourself, we give it uh, released the talk from Grand Shaykh on Facebook was that uh, the concept of our siwak and making siwak and the du'a of the siwak is actually, Ya Rabbi protect me from nifaqi wa shirk khafi that protect me from hypocrisy and the hidden shirk. And Sultan and awliya described that the hidden shirk and the character that Allah most dislikes and Prophet dislike is the judgment of creation, the judgment of people. And that when you begin to live a life thinking it's your responsibility to judge people, then you begin to mistreat people, dislike people and it makes all the, the groups to fall apart because now everybody is disliking and distrusting. So our responsibility in life is to judge ourselves, purify ourselves and, and leave others to their path and whatever they're doing is they have their Lord and Allah will deal with them and raise them, teach them whatever is necessary. So this whole path is not based on if somebody else has a light. If you're asking which shaykh to follow then you have to go back and look at the YouTube and, and read a book and see what you want to choose. But you. Don't come into a shaykh's room and ask him, which shaykh should I follow? So that question is, is based on other people, don't judge people. If you're worried about which shaykh to follow then go back and read the books and determine from the book you read and the YouTubes you listen to what your heart feels and then stand by it and hold firm. But not every shaykh is this reality because they don't even speak this reality. As Salaamu Nor teach it, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Regarding last week's sohbah, uh, which of the companions is the one connected to the miswak? InshaAllah. <laughs> yeah we have to get to that sohbah. So we know that from the, the, the talk from the reality of uh, Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq that inspiration came that uh, is teaching that these souls of light they're always around and have always been. And at any time Allah dispatch them and this is in the, the hikmah and the wisdom of destiny, predestiny and the world of light that nobody can say no to that. Because Allah does what He wants with His creation. So everything is a cause and effect when, when somebody has an asa and it symbolizes support and help and many different realities then alhamdulillah that the dispatch of the sunnah of Sayyidina Muhammad then has a very close link with the holy companions and this is their their gift from Allah and the khidmat to the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad The nation who accepted Islam 
and the nation who has to come to the da'wah of Islam. Because all creation is under the banner of Muhammadun Rasulullah They accept it, alhamdulillah, they don't accept it, they will accept it. So everything is created for that light. So the holy companions their life is to live a life of service to Sayyidina Muhammad So anyone who wants something from that Divinely Presence then Prophet dispatches their reality to overlook and oversee them, witness over their nations and lend them a Muhammadan support. So that has an immense reality. InshaAllah when we get to the other urses and other birthdays and they illuminate us further on that so that we can keep, keep going until the, the next event. But that was a gift inshaAllah for the Ursa Mubarak of Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq and to teach an immense love for the Holy Sunnah. That you know you keep the Sunnah and has an immense, immense reality. Just imagine because it's a symbol of love and that's why Allah described to Prophet that anybody who revives your Sunnah is granted the ajr of 70 martyrs, not one, 70 martyrs. And Mawlana Shaykh's name was Muhi al Sunnah. So, this was a, a name and a title for these big awliya that this is a greatest honor is to in life revive the Sunnah. So, when we have Sunnah items, it is a, it is a great love for Prophet is to tell people, carry your siwak. Until the secret comes to you, you're getting all of its immense blessings. Carry your asa. If you know that the, the presence of Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq is there with you and you now know that reality, then keep one in your car, keep one where you're praying and keep for that support and that accompany me and my love for you and your love for me and my love for Prophet grant me a madad, grant me a support. So the main is that go towards the sunnah, it is an immense shield. Who's the ring? Who's the reality of wudu? Who's the reality of uh, siwak? I would imagine all of these holy companions, so do them all. Keep the sunnah so that we can keep their companions' nazar upon us, their love and du'as for us, so it makes so much sense. This should make sense. Mahturidi, Imam al Mahturidi, because they want us to start quoting from these things, is that Sharia should make common sense and sensical, right? Because the, the rise of the clarification of the aqeedah was to combat the extremist ideologies because they became very literal and very dogmatic and angry about everything. So then the clarification of the Islamic tenets of belief was then based on this has to be and his school of thought was based on it has to be logical. So in this immense reality it makes common sense and that's what's important. When something doesn't make common sense then you know somebody's pushing something. You read Qur'an, any way you read Qur'an is beautiful. You're at the qabr, you read Qur'an as much as you want. Extremists come and say, no you can only read it here and there and only read this or that. That's a lie, that doesn't make any sense at all. Allah said, everywhere is a masjid except when you go to wash yourself in forbidden places. But everywhere is the masjid of Allah you can recite any part of Qur'an anywhere and Allah said, everywhere is a masjid. So that's common sense. So extremist ideology just comes to agitate and aggravate everybody. So Mahturidi and this aqeedah of belief and ashari beliefs were based on it has to be logical, commonsensical and that's the way of awliya. That whatever they're teaching is the depth and the deep, deep understandings of sharia and they bring it out as if like kindergarten. So people want to see quotes and, and quotations and footnotes 
But no, it comes out enough for even a kindergartner to understand and to make sense. That's Mawlana Shaykh's gift and, and that was an immense reality of his presence, is to take very complicated Islamic issues and bring it out for even a kindergartner to understand, inshaAllah. But hold tight, let's see for the next urs and the next uh, wiladat and birth and which of the companions bless us with their reality and that to, to draw near to that reality and how the Khalil al-Rahman opened and parted the, the seas of ignorance and took from the, the hands of Pharaoh into the Promised Land. That's what's important and the immensity of that reality and the, the, the great Siddiqs and the Muhammadan Madad is throughout time, throughout time. Imagine what Sayyidina Sulaiman was doing with a ring, how much he was under attack from shayateen and devils and that now is coming. Sayyidina Sulaiman knew that that event would be far worse in the last days. The Ya Rabbi you saved our nation as a result of what you gave me in a ring. Right, his aqeedah aqeed, was what? Ishq and muhabbat but he saved his nation was a ring. So it means there's a secret in everything, there's a secret in the sharia. That ring saved the nation of Sayyidina Sulaiman Salam from every type of shayateen and ifrit and carried his entire nation on clouds. He had armies in the hundreds and tens of thousands on fabrics and moving in the air. This is Islamic law, Islamic uh, jurisprudence, it's all verified Qur'anic ayahs. How is that possible? And Allah said it was by means of a ring because when he lost the ring, he lost that power. And who's the, the ring? It's the sunnah of Sayyidina Muhammad Every nation asked for support, asked Ya Rabbi grant me a support, that grant me an ability to fight these things and Allah sent the support of Sayyidina Muhammad And the holy companions have eternally been in that world of light. They were not determined companions on earth. Allah didn't say from these inni mini mani more you're this one, you're that one. It's ancient, ancient souls. From the time Allah brought light into existence and named it Muhammadun Rasulullah from that light partitioned and named Ali, named Omar, named Uthman, named Abi Bakr, named the lights from the world of light pre-time of creation, named them, dressed them, gave them their destinies and the position that they would hold. And those lights all around the light of Sayyidina Muhammad There's not something from dunya that Allah picks and chooses people but these are already been predestined in the world of light and then they manifest in the form, that's Qur'an, Alam al-Qur'an badan khalaq al-insan. So always the world of light comes first and then this world of creation manifests. So what's been written in an ancient world of light and light scientifically they know has no time. So who were they in this world of light? What was their role over all times? And what Prophet dispatched? Just the ring gives you an understanding of what type of power it had, how it commanded the ifrit and shayateen to be fearful of it and they didn't move because of the might in the ring that Allah gave. What do you think then the ring of Sayyidina Muhammad's nation and in the last days what those rings will have? So when they start to disclose this stuff then there's an amazing reality in this reality. So people don't use your brain, just use your heart. There's a reason why awliya are dispatching these. They get these rings, get these canes, get these siwaks, get all this sunnah of Sayyidina Muhammad get the sunnah clothing, the way of the heavens. Because it has an immense power, immense reality. 
And we pray that Allah address us and bless us from the immensity of these lights, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaikum As Salaam uh, Regarding the huruf, why did we start from the last letter in the word insan instead of the first? Forgive our ignorance. Sure. Well, you have to reach to the heavens because you're here on earth. So we're trying to reach a heavenly reality but we're starting from our earthly presence. So we traverse towards the reality. You're not coming from the reality to the earth to know the earthly reality, you're, you're leaving your earthly reality to move to the heavens inshaAllah. So Alif is the Divinely Presence, so we don't start from Divinely Presence, we understand that we are here on this earth. So our earthly understanding to traverse, break the atmosphere and enter now into the world of lights. This is the way of reflecting inward and the spiritual warrior and spiritual journey, inshaAllah. And those two noons we have the graphics and on the Nur Muhammad website we have the articles and, and you know graphics people used to put out these, these graphics with beautiful graphics with the sun on the first noon, a moon on the second noon and these were then uh, very important for posts. Maybe Ali can make a post that shows insan with the sun and the moon and inshaAllah. But this is the month in which to ask for it, why they brought it now is because Subhana man huwa khalaqa nur is coming. So everyone is encouraged that Rajab is opening, so Sunday night, Monday wherever you're, you're opening and the reality of Rajab is opening is that read the welcoming of Rajab, shower to welcome the month of seclusion, the month of Allah granting light, anybody who wants to enter in 40 days of, of uh, lentil diets to control uh, desires and control bad habits. Anybody who intends to do their fasting on certain days or lots of days or all the days, it's the time for ibadah and worshipness. So it's a immense, immense, it's always people get upset when you teach after it started. Because in this, oh you didn't give us an opportunity to learn all of this. So this time we start a little bit earlier that anybody who wants to do lentil diet, I'm sure you got an email already. Don't ever unsubscribe from our emails, that's rude and also it cuts you off from announcements and understandings. So the email went out for Raja or it should have gone out so Mati better send it out inshaAllah, I think he sent it yesterday. That has the awrad, the wazifas, you want to do the Rajat lentil diet, what to recite. So all of these things so that we can receive these lights, imitate a people and you'll be from them. So alhamdulillah these are from the realities of Sultanul Awliya and uh, if we imitate them at least we get the ajr and the reward of the immense lights and blessings for the love and the ishq of Sayyidina Muhammad and the Monday starting, Thursday will be the first Friday of Rajab and that's Laylatul Raqaib in which the light of Sayyidina Abdullah went into the womb of Sayyidatana Amina salam. And that that light of Sayyidina Muhammad was transferred to the mother's womb and becomes the night of wishes and desires that what the nation wishes for the sake of the arrival of Sayyidina Muhammad that Allah grant to them, dress them, bless them and by means of that take away difficulties from them. That's the holiness of Thursday night and the first uh, Friday of Rajab. So we pray that Allah give us a life in which to see that night, to be dressed by it, to be blessed by it and again do your good deeds in this month and in these nights has immense blessings, immense blessings. And some people say that they do things and they don't see anything that's incorrect, that everything has been given, everything has been dressed in their lives and much of what people don't see of harm and hardship that was kept away from them as a result of good deeds and good actions. So that the, Allah safeguard and keep people protected by this love and this way of, of uh, rahmah and mercy inshaAllah and to keep good character, inshaAllah. Uh, 
Assalamu alaikum, Maulana. Wa alaikum salam Can you please talk a little bit about the lentil diet if we want to subject our nafs to this difficulty, inshaAllah? Yeah, it's a lentil diet. So, the lentils are taste good. What can you do? With the <coughs> you have to eat the lentil diet. I think in the instructions it says it, eat lentil diet, have one type of lentil formula, don't keep changing it. The purpose of the diet is to show you the importance we place on food, that we, our life is living around food. What I'm going to have for lunch, what I'm going to have for dinner, what I'm going to have for breakfast and everyone's excited to get to those points. Once you have only one thing that you can eat, you're no longer excited for breakfast, you're no longer excited for lunch or for dinner. And after about seven days you're kind of fed up with lunch and dinner and it just shows you how much we're relying on food. We're not sustained by food but we live for food. The lentil diet actually shows that and that, that when they go into seclusions they're given the lentil diet because it has enough protein, no meat products, no animal product within it and as a result there's a cleaning and purification of the heart. So at that point when their reliance on food begins to drop they feel that their spiritual energies are much more powerful especially in seclusions. So they have a tremendous amount of himma to do the zikrs and the awrahs that they have to do and have to complete. So it's again one of the things to put upon oneself for 40 days and the instructions for the lentil diet go in. They have one form of bread like a pita bread with not too much fat on it like the big puffy breads, either a lavash or a pita bread and then they can have some dates and tea or coffee with no milk products, no animal products, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Sayyidi <coughs> Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Sayyidi, last time I tried the lentil diet my nafs nearly destroyed my life, please advise. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <coughs> you must have an importance in food in your diet so that… that I can imagine the nafs if, if, if your life is, is, is heavily inspired by meals then that can be a big fight against the nafs. You can try it again and, and see if you know if your life doesn't sort of fall, fall to pieces but lentil sh shouldn't be so extreme because you have the lentil, you have bread, you have dates, you have tea or coffee so it should be okay and you may drop 30 pounds as a result because the importance of food is no longer there, the desire to eat drops significantly but it's also a training. And any time you, you find it's enough then you know you call it uh, quits. It's only a… it's, it's a, not a sunnah, it's a way of training and tarbiyah through awliya because of their seclusions and their experiences in seclusion. The way of Prophet was complete abstinence. So anybody wants to say, we got funny emails, oh what, what is this lentil diet a part of the sunnah? It's not a part of the sunnah, the sunnah was actually not to eat. So Prophet fasted the whole of Rajab many times and the sunnah was to not eat to the extent that you had to put stomach because of the air, you had to put stones on your stomach because of the air and the pain of hunger. So if you want to do that is the sunnah of Sayyidina Muhammad So by ease of awliya come and teach us, oh, okay you may not have that and very few people will try that to fast the entire month and consistently fast and abstain from food and break your, your fasting with only one date so that your stomach swells from air and from pain. So the sunnah of Prophet is far more aggressive in fighting the nafs and the, the way to reach towards realities. So this is a merciful way with a softer approach. People can tolerate eating lentils and, and not fasting the whole month but it trains them in the same logic because after seven to ten days you don't really find yourself moving so aggressively for food. Dinner comes and goes and you may pass it sometimes thinking, I don't need that much. So it has an immense learning within it, inshaAllah. It's a good addition to the, to the ways of ibadah, inshaAllah. 
Allah subhanahu wa rabbika rabbil izzat amma yasifun Salaamun al mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.